I'll use the music business as an example, and I'm sure there's plenty of parallels across the entertainment spectrum. Um, you 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 struggle to get the contract, and then the contract is sort of you know the indentured servitude type of thing. We our first contract was seven albums, essentially fourteen years. So I signed that contract when I was twenty three. That's crazy. Okay, so I'm signing at twenty three years old. I'm signing a contract that's supposed to take me into thirty seven. You're signing a contract for more than half your life. And and if you look at the shelf life of most artists, it's four to. So they're basically anticipating your entire arc. That's so crazy. So you don't have any leverage, you know, other than that they want to sign you. You sign the deal, and then it becomes this weird dance of like, can I sustain success? Yeah. If you get success and you have leverage, they'll get out of your way because you're making them a lot of money. But the minute you're not making them as much money, then they step in and they start playing these Jedi mind tricks on you. We know what to do. You know, the public's going to forget about you. I mean, I've heard all these things like, you know, this kind of weird like, yeah, you're in the room, but, you know, we're the arbiter of whether you can stay in the room. That's the weird position that record companies had for a long time that they don't seem to have anymore. I would I would argue against that because they, they still do. Well, they've moved to a different set of circumstances, and I'm not as conversant as I, as I once was. But one thing they do with certain younger artists, but I think particularly more in the pop realm, is they do these 360 deals where it's like, right. if you get a perfume deal, if you yeah. like your whole world, they we, own you. We own a piece of your whole world. And fame is such a great quotient in American life now that you can see where kids would trade fame and give and be willing to give away like the the, the profit part. Well, they'll take a risk at the long term ownership. Right. So let me jump in there. So if you actually survive the cut, let's say let's call it phase one. You're successful. You're a name, and now you're in a place to either renegotiate or your deal is up or whatever. I once had a conversation with a very powerful music executive, and I said, and I was friends with the guy, so I was like, "Give me the insider psychology here." Now that I know the game that you run, what do you tell people like me when they get here? And he says, "Oh, it's just there's always a price." So they know that even if you get through the matrix of the whole thing and get out the other side, that there's just a dollar amount that will buy you back in. Whoa. They're not worried that you'll go independent. And in fact, if you look at a lot of the machinations of the music business over the last 20 years, especially with the rise of the internet, it's to keep people in the system. Yes. They don't want true independence. Right, but it look seems no, like... Look, look, I'll give you, look no further than the deals that the record labels cut with the streaming services... They got into ownership equity deals with the streaming services in an, in, an, in an arrangement for them to have an equity position. They agreed to very low rates for the artist's music. Oh, so that's so when why. So when you listen to Bob Dylan's song on Spotify, Bob Dylan's not getting a lot of money for that. But as Spotify and the other streaming services raise up in their equity position, the labels benefit. So the labels pimped out their own artist to take a greater equity position in a rising business. It's like, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they weaken it. the artist position to take a better position at the table themselves. That is fascinating. And they, they weaken the monetary position of compensation in order to get equity in the company. Right. And, and, and now, you see, and now you see it where uh, Metallica's management, for example, has come out and, and uh, especially uh, U2's former manager, Paul McGinnis, come out. They're trying to take on YouTube now. Because YouTube's got this weird, funky position where they'll pay on licensed music, but they won't pay for covers, and you know what I mean? Yes. Like YouTube's like one of the big targets of the business because whatever deal they agreed to with YouTube 10 years ago is super weak. And But again, these are all machinations that go on above the artist's spot. First of all, nigga, I haven't filmed a video in like six weeks. <laughs> So I might be rusty, I might be off. Last time I filmed the videos, we didn't have his arm. His arm looks weird as shit. But I can't lie, man. It feels good to be back in front of the camera filming. For those y'all that know, I had COVID and, you know, we had to travel and all that. But it feels really good to be back in front of y'all. I'm reinvigorated, I'm re-energized, I'm refreshed, you know, and I'm ready to start talking about this shit again. So shout out to Billy Corgan and Joe Rogan. Uh, this is on Joe Rogan's podcast. People be wanting me to shout out the source clips. Y'all know who the fuck it is. Like, go watch the shit. My ducks. My swans, welcome to the pod.
My name is Dorian from Group82Music.com, and right here we got Billy Corgan talking about just a bunch of fucked up shit that goes on in the music business. I'm sorry, a bunch of fucked up shit that goes on in the music industry and not the music business. I went live on Instagram about this last night. There's a difference between the music business and the music industry. The music business is what I'm involved in. So as far as social media marketing, understanding my publishing, understanding my royalties, collecting money, making the art I want to make, being independent, right? Using the gifts that I've been given in order to provide and protect my family that's the music business inside of that there's also the music industry so for people that are worried about clout they're worried about fame they're worried about being on double xl or source now rolling stone they're worried about radio they're worried about grammy they're worried about doing all the shit that a rapper or a singer is supposed to do that's the music industry every single genre of business arena or area or whatever the hell you want to call it a business has an industry right you talk about podcasting there are people that are in the podcast business there are people in the podcast industry that want to be celebrities. There are people in the social media business that develops a tech. There are people on social media that wants to be a fucking blue check maven. I ain't into none of that shit. I'm not into that industry shit in any capacity. I'll take my podcast, for example, 82 Points of View with Dorian. I asked guests one time to come on my podcast. That's it. I'm not asking you more than once because anything after that to me is fucking begging. And I don't need shit from nobody. There are plenty of people who have come on 82 Points of View with Dorian who have followed that have came on after one ass. I'm not asking you multiple times because those are people that want that industry shit. There are a lot of people involved in the music business or the real estate business or the food truck business or the weed business who just want attention and validation. I'm not with that. And that's a lot of y'all problems that's in this music shit or just an entrepreneurship in general. You want attention and validation. You don't really want to make money. You don't really want to grind. That's why you don't make content. That's why you say, how do I grow my social media? when I got hundreds of videos about how to grow your social media. Y'all keep asking how to get your music on Spotify. We've talked about that before. Y'all keep asking the difference between BMI and ASCAP and Distro Kid. Well, you should know this stuff by now. It's the reason why my content is becoming more entrepreneurial based as opposed to just music business based. Because y'all niggas don't care about the music business. Y'all care about the music industry. And if you want to be an industry chaser, like Billy Corgan said right here. Y'all need to go look up who Billy Corgan is with Smashing Pumpkins and the nigga he did what he's supposed to do. Like he said right here, they can always buy you again. When you do an industry shit, you can always be bought. Your soul is always for sale. Now I know y'all start thinking Illuminati in and I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that you will ask somebody to come on your podcast 15 times if you know that, that episode is going to get you 100,000 views. You will fucking beg because you're an industry nigga. I'm not like that. That's not how I get down. And I realize in making all this content and everything that's happened with Group A2 over the the past two years that I have been talking to industry people. I'm a music business person who has been relaying this message to music industry people. Y'all want to be in the industry. And that's why a lot of y'all are in the same spots you were in two years ago. But those y'all that have progressed, you're music business people. If your business has grown, you don't care about the industry and what you're in. You worried about the business and the fundamentals of running a good business. This is why my delivery is the way it is. This is why I say shit the way that I do. This is why I come off the way I come off. This is why Coach Clark comes into effect. Because people who are worried about the business, y'all don't get offended. You get it. But for those y'all that are concerned about the industry, it hurts your fucking feelings. Because you want somebody to massage your butt cheeks. You want somebody to give you a blue check. You want somebody to have you go and be on a song with Drake and Kendrick and J. Cole and Jay-Z. And you want to go to Breakfast Club Hot 97. And ain't nothing wrong with any of that shit I just said. But that's why you're doing this. You ain't doing this for a legacy. You ain't doing this for generational wealth. You're not doing this to protect your family. And that's why you're... Your audience is this big and they don't give a fuck about you because they can read right through that shit. You got to be real, man. You got to have some sort of morals and values and integrity in this. If not, you're going to be bought and tossed to the side, just like Billy Corgan said. The whole industry is set up like this. They don't want you to be fully independent because they can't control you. Those of us that are fully independent and in the business, we can't be controlled. But for those of y'all that want to be slaves, this shit's wide open. It's not that hard to get a record deal. It's not that hard to get signed. 
do all the shit that the slaves and industry niggas are doing and you'll get signed. You won't own shit, but you'll get signed. But if you're somebody that's really about this music business, I appreciate you rocking with me and I appreciate you watching the content. If you're an entrepreneur in other fields, cause I know we've been doing a lot broader content. I appreciate you that care about the business and not that industry clout chasing shit. Continue to stay locked into the content, continue to hit like, continue to hit subscribe and be on the lookout for the shit that we got coming. I'm working on something right now. Fuck it, I'll tell y'all, I'm working on a class right now. Class might be out by the time this video comes out. I don't know, but I'm filming it, I'm writing it, and for people that are really serious about the music business, this is gonna be the best class you could ever ask for. It's everything that I wish I had when I first started. So stay locked in, I'm gonna be advertising it. It might be at the end of this video. Click the links in the bio, click the description box. Appreciate y'all, I love y'all. Mouth the palm, y'all stay true. Scared money don't make no money, y'all don't hear that. Blue82music.com